Hello and welcome back everybody to another Albion Online Dev Talk. In today's video, we'll continue our look at the new faction warfare system we developed for the upcoming Call to Arms update for Albion Online. If you haven't seen our first video, you may want to follow the link in the description to watch that first. Now, let's get into it. In this video, I want to go in depth with the new faction screen, faction seasons and ranks, what rewards you can spend your hard earned faction points on and how to make sure you earn the highest faction point rates possible. The heart of the new faction warfare system is the faction screen. You can open the screen from the activities button at the top of your HUD. On this screen, you have access to a wealth of information about city faction warfare and your status in it. From here, you can see which faction is currently winning, your scores and weekly reports, you can see which faction is offering rewards for joining them, and most importantly, the status of your personal faction campaign, as well as your rank. After enlisting with a faction, you become eligible to fight in their campaign and earn ranks within that faction. The campaign is a month-long season, which counts all points you earn on behalf of your faction and unlocks special reward chests full of valuable loot as you pass certain milestones in the campaign. The faction ranks, on the other hand, measure your loyalty as well as your contribution. The lower ranks are all the same for all factions, but the higher ranks are unique to each city and are extremely hard and prestigious to unlock and maintain. We're also working on rankings, which allow you to check which player is currently ranking highest within your faction. Your rank also affects the rate at which you earn points, and these, of course, can be spent at the faction store. When it comes to the faction store, you can still spend your points on city faction hearts and crests for your faction capes. You can also still spend them on mounts, but we have significantly boosted their stats to improve their usability and give them all a place in Albion. On top of this, we've added an elite version of each faction mount, which are not only new tier 8 rare mounts for animal breeders to grow on their farms, they each also come with two unique abilities. The Limehurst Elite Boar can dash forward, damaging unmounted enemies and knocking them backwards. In addition, when using this mount while flagged for, your, for the Limehurst faction, you can use its Boar Vitality ability to dismount and at the same time provide your faction allies with a large healing area of effect. The Bridgewatch Elite Terror Bird can use its Zig ability to dash into a target direction and can then use the Zag ability to dash again, allowing it to outmaneuver incoming attacks. Its faction ability Desert Breeze grants all allies a move speed bonus and dismounts the rider. The Matlock Elite Ram can use its Steadfast ability to reduce damage taken while channeling. At the end of the channel, the ram gains move speed based on the number of hits taken while channeling. Its faction ability Mountain Resilience grants a bonus to maximum health while staying within its area and dismounts the player. The Thetford Elite Swamp Salamander can use its Shed Skin ability to cleanse any negative effects upon it. Its faction dismount ability Reptile Agility grants attack speed and bonus damage to nearby allies when using it to dismount. Finally, the Fort Sterling Elite Dire Bear has a passive ability which adds stacks to attacking enemies. Its active ability Winter Core can boost the bear's move speed and slows all surrounding enemies based on the amount of stacks they have upon them. Its faction ability dismounts the rider and grants a bonus to defense for players within the area. Like all faction abilities, it is triggered when the player is flagged for the appropriate faction and can only affect players in the same faction. Please be aware that all of these abilities are still in testing at the time of recording of this video, so their functionality may still change. As you can see, the new elite faction mounts are an awesome way to spend your faction points. But how do you ensure you maximize how many faction points you earn? One way, of course, is to fight well on behalf of your faction. Another is to keep an eye on which faction is currently paying the most reward points. Factions that haven't been doing well in the war will be offering much higher rates of faction point gains, and they will even allow you to retain some or most of your rank if you enlist with them. 
Successful factions, however, will see less of a reason to pay high rates of points and won't be so welcoming to new, new recruits, so you'll have to give up your ranks if you want to join them. With these mechanisms, we plan to ensure faction warfare remains balanced and players have strong incentives to join those cities most in need of reinforcements, while leaving the choice which faction to join entirely up to you. Today, we've covered the faction screen, ranks, campaign and balancing, as well as the awesome new faction elite mounts you'll be able to unlock and earn. But there is still more to talk about. In the next video, we'll pull the mask of the new faction we're introducing in the Call to Arms update and talk about their unique gameplay, their unique rewards, as well as the special Red Zone recurring event. Thanks for watching and goodbye.